bring in Bloomberg political analyst uh, Matthew Dowd, who was, of course, watching that debate last night. And what lit the fire under Rick Perry here? Well, it's fight night in Vegas. And the first night of the World Series <laughs> is tonight. And the only thing missing last night was this between the two of them. <laughs> Um, that would have been the next step. Yeah, that would have been the like. next step. I'm glad they took all sharp implements <laughs> yeah. away from him before the debate. Um, I, you know, he gave an energy speech last night. He discovered his own energy, Rick Perry, for some reason. I think he realizes his back was against the wall. He had very, some very poor debate performances, even in the Bloomberg debate. As you know, he didn't come with a lot of energy or a lot of vigor. He right. came tonight. I mean, he came last night, and it was an exchange. Well, what do you think? I mean, do you think that this actually helped him? I think it, what it did was is it raised a fundamental issue about Mitt Romney that has, that has carried with him for a long time, which is a question of trust and a question of characters. There's a huge part of the Republican Party right. that does not trust Mitt Romney, which is why he's never gotten above 30% in the polls. I don't think it got... You mean that he's hiding something? There's skeleton that, in his closet? That they think that he is not, that his core isn't solid, that he'll go okay. one way on one issue depending on election and another way on another issue. That's what a lot of Republicans think. Rick Perry raised that Achilles heel directly last night. Mm -hmm. I don't think it benefited necessarily Rick Perry, though I think the narrative now will help him. I think the press will say, oh, Rick Perry's coming back. Maybe he's going to do something. I think it did hurt Mitt Romney in the fact that it prevents Mitt Romney from growing his support at this time. So how does Mitt recover from this then? Well, I think Mitt's had a whole series of debates. I think he's probably come, has come to the debates best prepared. He's got the best organization right now. He has a lot of money. I think his goal has always been to be the last man standing, mm -hmm. that the last adult in the room and I'm there, even after you go through all these series of dating. You know, <laughs> you dated Michelle Bachman, you dated Rick Perry, you're dating Herman Cain right now, and I'm going to be the last guy at the dance, and that's, that's what I think his strategy is. But, you know, but Matt, I mean, you, you know, obviously a Republican strategist, you know that when issues like this arise, right, illegal immigration, which is such a, a flashpoint here in the United States, uh, it's hard to shake that off. How does Mitt Romney shake that off? Well, I think he's going to have to de just lay out the facts again. This came up four or five years ago. I think he thought he had dealt with it. I think last night you could tell he was not prepared for this. I think he was not yeah. prepared for this as, as personal of attack, which is why I think Mitt got very sort of animated and in, in, he actually physically touched Rick Perry. Yeah. He's going to have to lay this out. He's going to have to continue his campaign. But maybe the best thing for him to do is hurry up, just uh, inform everybody about it, mm -hmm. and then move on to something else and try to get back to you the economy. Some sort of statement or something yeah, like just that? Just say, like, here's the facts. This is the deal, and we should be talking about jobs. Okay. Uh, how did you think the other candidates did? I thought you know, the one that I think could likely rise from this is Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich comes across as the one that seems most thoughtful, that seems to most concentrated on President Obama. He keeps trying to say we shouldn't get in a mud fight here. We should concentrate on what the issue is. And so I think if Herman Cain falters, which I don't think last night, I think he, he got carved up a little bit over his 999 plan, right. and he may falter over the next few weeks. If Herman Cain falters, I think the next person that may rise is Newt Gingrich. So Newt could actually be a yeah. dark horse candidate, yes, essentially. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Matt, let me just so, I'm glad you mentioned Herman Cain because obviously after the Bloomberg television debate, everyone started focusing even more on this 999 plan. Uh, and there was uh, some research done by the National Policy Center, nonpartisan, uh, where they looked at the numbers, they crunched the numbers, and they said that his 999 plan is going to cut the tax bill for 95% of Americans with cash income exceeding $1 million or more and then raise taxes on the middle class. That's got to be hurtful for Herman Cain. Well, I think it's more hurtful for a general election, though it is hurtful because he still has to answer the question whether or not he's going to have a regressive tax system that he's proposing, which many people have, have alluded to that he does. I think in the primary process, that attack is not nearly as effective as it would be if President Obama launches it next summer and next fall. Then I think he's really vulnerable to the fact that he's going to raise taxes on, in many people's mind, raise taxes on the middle class and cuts taxes on the wealthy. But I think for now, it's not nearly as a problem as it will be for six months months or eight months from now, if he's the nominee. Well, should he be more transparent about what this 999 plan is and put out those numbers on his website? And, you know, because there's a lot of questions about how he gets to his numbers, right? Well, I, well he's, I think he's kind of the accidental front runner. <laughs> I don't think he expected, I think he had a 999 thing, and I don't think he expected to sort of be having to be questioned on this at this point in time. I mean, I think he wanted to be president, but the fact that he's now either tied or leading the polls comes as a surprise to a lot of us, but especially him. So I think he's going to have to flesh this out over the next few weeks. He he wasn't prepared to do that, you could tell. Well, it's too late. He's got to do it. It's really right. too late. <laughs> Matthew, great to see you, Thank as you. always. Matt Dowder, Bloomberg political analyst.